Hi, hi everyone. <laughs> welcome or welcome back. Uh, uh, it is Friday. It is the Friday before New Year's. It is December 29th. I've got an awkward lighting situation. I'm trying to avoid the flashing fairy lights. If you've been here before, you know of what I speak. And I've got, I have a new tripod that I'm having issues with, but it has a light on it. So I've got that light on. So maybe we've got more light back here than we normally have, but I can't have it facing directly at me or it shines in my glasses. And then <laughs> I have like alien, I don't know, situation going on. Ah! And then, oh, okay. I was almost literally going to spill the tea. I don't have anything to spill the tea about otherwise, but the actual tea. I got some tea here. Maybe you have some tea or a beverage, an adult beverage perhaps. I don't know. I'm not going to judge you. I won't judge you. Mmm. That's nice. Anyway, how are you? I hope that you're well. I hope that your week has been going well. I hope that you, if you celebrated Christmas, that you had a nice time. Or that you at least had some quiet time off. I am here uh, to talk about a little bit about um, my last books of the year. Um, I finished Lucy by the Sea. I actually finished it last Saturday and I did film like a vlog type short video about it and then I then I kind of proceeded to rant about some other things that didn't really have anything to do with Lucy Barton. So I may edit part of that and include it here because it was initial thoughts. Or I may just <laughs> scrap that entirely because you guys don't need to hear me rant about anything. And it wasn't about the book. I just, I had a, I had, had an experience out in the world and... I felt the need to, I guess it was a Festivus Grievance airing is what it was that, um, Festivus or the rest of us, I, I was, it was the airing of the grievances, but you don't need to hear that. You don't, I don't need to make that public. I, yeah, I've wrapped up my Lucy reading for the year and wow, I mean, just wow. <laughs> if this was good the first time. So I read this for the first time at the end of September and knew that I wanted to reread it before the year was over. And this was just absolutely fantastic. Uh, I just loved it. So for Remember December, so this wraps up my, this almost wraps up my Remember December reading. I am reading for a book that I uh thought that I love but just don't really remember anything about it. I was going to read The Robber Bride by Margaret Atwood, but I started it and I don't know, I just couldn't get into it. There was something about the writing that that bugged me, but I just kind of how do I say it? It, it felt I it felt written like it felt like I don't know. I wasn't getting on with the voice, so I decided to pivot since I had made a pile of possibilities and go to the next book on my list, which is The Bee Queen by Louise Erdrich. Erdrich? 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 By Louise. And <laughs> uh, I'll talk about that. I'm not finished with this one yet, but I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit maybe at the end. Anyway, let's talk about Lucy. Let's talk about Lucy. That's what I'm really here to talk about. Um, so, uh, I talked about O. William, and at the end of O. William, it, it ends in October, um, where Lucy and, and William sort of, they sort of part ways. And then we learn in this book, this book starts in, that, that's October of 2019. This book begins in March of 2020 when William calls Lucy and says, basically, <laughs> pack your things, we're leaving town. And Lucy's sort of like, what? Huh? And she's sort of, she's just in her own world and she's kind of, um, 
you know, she's just kind of not like, why is, what, why is he making a big deal? Well, okay. And she just sort of like, is, well, okay, if, if you say so. And so he tells her to, you know, take care of whatever appointments she needs to take care of and to pack a bag and that he's going to take her out of the city. And he doesn't tell her that he's taking her to Maine. And so he takes her to the town of Camden, Maine, which if you have read the Olive books, you will know. And it's a fictional, it's a fictional town um, in, in Maine, on the coast of Maine. And she's sort of, yeah, she's sort of nonplussed. She's like, well, okay, whatever. And, you know, she does mention she's doing this this is all she's looking back on this time as she writes this but she she says um it was sort of fortuitous because she had just released a book and she had gone on a book tour and she had been supposing supposed to go to italy and spain in march and for some reason she just decided that she didn't want to go and so she had canceled it she had backed out of the book tour and um, it sort of comes up in O. William that Lucy, uh, like her mother, uh, has sort of, I guess what you call premonitions or visions. But it's not something that she, she said, I didn't have a vision. I didn't have a premonition necessarily. I just decided I didn't want to go. So she just cancels it and says, okay, I'm not going. And so William takes her up to Maine and... For the first part of the book, she just is not really, you know, not really understanding what's going on. William also arranges to get their daughters, who who both live in Brooklyn, out of the city. Um, Chrissy uh, goes to stay at her in-laws' house because her in-laws are in Florida, and Becca, the younger daughter, uh, he tries to find a place for them. William does, but. Becca's husband, Trey, does not want to leave the city, and so they end up deciding to stay in place. And, you know, Lucy's just not sure uh, about what's happening, and it, it begins to dawn on her through the news and through hearing very early on about some people that she knows uh, who... Uh, die of the virus. I should probably say this right now before I go any further. The thing about Lucy by the Sea is it this is set during the first year. This book covers a year and it's set during the first year of COVID and of the lockdowns. And it if you are at all sort of traumatized still by that, if you had a bad experience yourself, if you knew people who died or were sick or are still sick, if you're still concerned, if you're not comfortable about or about reading or about comfortable with reading about the pandemic, um, if you feel like you're not ready, I wouldn't recommend this book um, because it is, I mean, I, I find I was far I was here I was here in the Netherlands we had lockdowns we had four big lockdowns where we couldn't go anywhere um, you couldn't have people into your house you know only the only the grocery stores and the drug stores were open the streets were empty um, especially during the first uh, the first two lockdowns were were really hard um, but other than that, it was sort of otherworldly. I mean, we did not here in Amsterdam, at least we didn't see a lot. And Lucy is also not seeing a lot because she's in Maine, but her daughters are in New York and she's hearing about what's going on in New York, which I think, you know, I heard news stories, but it was really hard to know what was what. And it was pretty pretty, um, it sounds pretty horrific, honestly. Um, 
and it's not it's not super graphic but there are some there are some moments in the book where she's talking to her daughters and she see or she's watching the news and she's seeing what's going on in New York because New York she considers New York her home um, that she finds herself sort of traumatizing and so I just wanted to be honest and clear about that um, this is you know it's 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 interesting to compare this to say like Tom Lake where um, the characters in Tom Lake and the story of Tom Lake is set also during the same the same pandemic it's the summer of that first year of the pandemic summer of 2020 but it is a book that very much shuts out the outside world and goes into a past story and then the present day story is very much a contained story about a family and this story is although it is very much about Lucy and William and Chrissy and Becca and the people that William and Lucy encounter or Lucy in particular encounters um, in Maine um, it is very much of the world story in many ways uh, so uh, they go to this house in Maine and the house that they go to the uh, it's been arranged by Bob Burgess and so if you've read the Burgess boys or if again if you have read Olive again here is Bob Burgess who plays a big part in this book because he and Lucy become good friends uh, he becomes sort of a confidant of hers or an F.A. do of each other um, and that is a really nice touch so we get to meet Bob Burgess and we see a lot more here of Lucy as a mother and we see more about her relationships with her daughters and the different relationships that she has with them and we learn more about them as people whereas before they've just sort of been my daughters my daughters here they become more individual uh, we, we she sort of is acknowledging that they're different people they've got problems of their own and the pandemic changes her relationship with her daughters and it also changes her relationship with William and it changes her relationship with herself because she she begins to learn a lot about herself and that she wasn't really, she hadn't really ever stopped to think about. Uh, yeah, so this, it covers it a, a year. I was thinking, you know, I'm not going to say what happens, but the writing is just so wonderful. And it's interesting because the four Lucy books, the um, My Name is Lucy Barton, Anything is Possible, O. William, and uh, Lucy by the Sea, uh, just form a really fascinating, com I don't, wouldn't even say it's a complete story, but a, 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 an expanding story, a broadening, a blooming story of, of Lucy Barton. Um, so my name is Lucy Barton and you know, it did not, I think maybe I did look this up long ago when it, there were only the two first two books which were My Name is Lucy Barton, and then immediately, I think it was the year after My Name is Lucy Barton came out, or maybe 18 months after Anything is Possible came out. And My Name is Lucy Barton is the is a memoir. And that's, so that's something that's sort of interesting and, and I think kind of important to remember. And I do think that with the Lucy books, it's best to read them in order. To read them out of order, I think you, you could do it, but I think it things there are a lot of things that won't make sense. And she references a lot of things in the past books. She references a lot of things that happened in her life that are that are more deeply explained in the past books. And not that those not that you couldn't read this first and then go back and still feel some resonance, but I just feel like this won't feel as deep and I think Lucy would be very, I think she would be hard to get to know if you started with O. William or with Lucy by the Sea. So her first, the first book is a memoir. So 
it is a book written for an audience of readers like like you and me but not you and me it's written for her readers it's written for Lucy Barton's audience and in that book she is telling the story of a time she's looking back at a time when uh, she was married to William her daughters were very young and she had a, an attack of appendicitis and that attack of appendicitis then resulted in a sorry that's my monitor flashing <laughs> my computer monitor is behind the <laughs> it's behind the camera uh, but she had an attack of appendicitis and then she falls ill while she's in the hospital and she ends up having to stay in the hospital for nine weeks and after she's been in the hospital not too long I'm gonna take a little sip of tea. You take a you take a little sip of your beverage too. Oh, that's good. Okay. Um, she's been uh, in the hospital not very long, and she wakes up, and there is her mother. And that's when we learn, you know, her mother is a person that doesn't. She does is a someone who's never traveled, never traveled. Lucy Barton grew up as poor as you can possibly imagine. She grew up in a rural town called, I, I think this is the correct pronunciation, Amgash, Illinois, uh, or Amgash, I'm not sure, A-M-G-A-S-H. Uh, it's a fictional town, it's not a real place. And uh, her parents, you know, were in a, it was a farming community, a rural community, and they lived in a garage until Lucy was seven. Not a garage apartment, but a garage. And then they moved into a very small house. And the memoir is about her, is about her childhood. And also then about the present day visit. Um, her mother comes and stays for five days and it is about their interaction during those five days. And then the next book is Any, Anything is Possible. And that is a linked set of short stories about the town where Lucy grew up and about people in that town. And in that collection of stories, um, My Name is Lucy Barton as a book has just been released. And Lucy is then on, in the book, on a book tour. And we meet her again at the end of Anything is Possible when she steps into a story, uh, when she comes to town to visit her brother Pete and her sister Vicki. And when they're as adults. So she's in Chicago and she decides that she wants to come and, and visit. And then in a William, um, which I've already talked about, uh, but O. William is really about William, and it is set closer to present day, 2019, um, and that is, and Lucy Barton, her husband, her second husband, David, has passed away, and her husband, her ex-husband, William, um, goes through some trials and tribulations in his own life, and she is talking about what is happening to William, and then we learn more about her relationship and we learn a little more about her childhood and also then her relationship with William and William's mother, Catherine Cole. And then in Lucy by the Sea, that's the continuing story now again of, of Lucy and William and Chrissy and Becca and the next chapter, if you will. And Elizabeth Strout has said she's still writing she has another book. There will be another book after Lucy by the Sea. When Lucy by the Sea was released, she said, I'm, I'm still writing, I'm still doing it. So I'm thinking that probably in 2024, maybe later in 2024, early 2025, there will be another book in this universe. Now the thing about Lucy by the Sea is also, I'm not going to give it away, and I've, I think I've mentioned it, that... Um, there are more characters 
from the other books in Lucy by the Sea. They start to creep in. Characters from Olive Kittredge, characters from the Burgess Boys. Well, I've already said Bob Burgess is here. And so she's really starting to, and then there are some other character connections to other books as well. And so she's really building a universe, and I, which I love. I love it when an author does this. And I think that one of the reasons she's able to do this is that Stroud's been very clear about the fact that she writes in scenes. She does not write a, a linear narrative. I'm going to put this down. So I'm just waving it around <laughs> like a conductor's baton or something. Um, she writes in scenes, and then she and she puts scenes together. She to, she sees how things go together. She lays them out or figures out where she wants what to go. But she writes only in scenes. So she's not sitting down and thinking, okay, I'm going to write this novel about Lucy now, and it's going to start here and end here, and it's going to be this. And so I think because she's doing it that way, uh it's creating it's I think that's way more um, conducive to building the kind of world that she's building so she didn't say specifically that her next book would be a Lucy book so maybe it will be another olive book maybe it will be another book of linked stories where she'll be putting things together that way I don't know but I can't wait I just can't wait um seems like there were other things that I wanted to say. These are just, I love when authors do this because it makes me, I'll go on thinking about it and then I'll, you know, I'll go back to something that I underlined or something that I thought of and I'm looking down at the book, sorry. <laughs> um, but there are some moments in here and I thought about, there were a couple of moments that I, where I thought, this is Strout really sort of addressing her readers and the world. And one was that there's a moment where she's talking to Becca, uh, her daughter Becca, and her daughter Becca says that the brother, um, excuse me, her husband, Trey, is very jealous of of Lucy and Lucy's like but he's a poet and I I'm, I'm not and you know something like well you know he just can't figure out why you're so popular because you just you know you write like white old lady story like old white lady stories or something like that <laughs> it's just wow okay um good to know that uh, misogyny and ageism are alive and well. And then there is a point during the book where Lucy goes, she's, she's recalling that when she was on that earlier book tour um, in late 2019, she got invited to go to back to her alma mater where she met William, which she never says the name of the school, but it's a big university outside Chicago, and I'm assuming that it's probably supposed to be Northwestern. And she gets invited by a literature professor to come, or a creative writing professor, to come and visit the, her class. And when she gets there, the students just don't have any questions for her don't have any interest in her and nothing nothing that the instructor does can get them to be interested or act interested or even really act civil towards her and it was just sort of and I was really wondering did this happen to Strout I couldn't find anything where she said it actually happened to her but it was sort of shocking I was like you know, and she just said they looked at their phones and they were all very privileged. And she said, and it was not at all like I could tell that it was no longer the world that I was in. And then she thinks about her her niece, her, her sister Vicky's daughter, Lila. And Lila shows up in anything as possible. Um, 
who had got won a scholarship to college and then after a year turned around and left. And so it's really interesting because she's exploring that economic divide. And then there's a, a moment where Lucy and Bob are talking about her memoir and Bob is saying that his his wife Margaret also loved Lucy's memoir and that you know she said it was a really touching picture of mothers and daughters and then Bob says but I don't think that's what it was about I think it was about class and I think I was thinking it was about you know basically class mobility or you know and that kind of thing and uh Lucy says you are right that is what it is about and I think I thought that I was like is that Strout kind of she's just kind of talking to us and say and saying all of you out there who think it's that's just a mother-daughter story it's actually a story about how we deal with class in this country which then I found that interesting because, you know, everybody this year and last year has been reading Demon Copperhead. And Lucy is probably, pro she probably grew up far poorer and with far less support than Demon did in Demon Copperhead, if you read Demon Copperhead. And the voice that we're hearing from Lucy in this book um, about having grown up poor and her and her identifying and empathizing with the people in the country who are very frustrated. And that's another interesting aspect of this book is that there is an exploration of class and uh, economics and how that affects our lives and how how it is dividing people and how that divide is growing and what it means. Um, that to me is a far more interesting exploration than I experienced in Demon Copperhead where I really felt that there was, not that it wasn't well done, but that King Solver really had a message and created a voice to be to tell that story and to drive that message and that that was just and it was just going to go that way and is not a way that you could get in and explore how hard it is or difficult it is um anyway i just thought that was interesting i it's such a deep book it's such a deep book i will be reading it again I love to reread books over and over when I really love them or I feel like they have a lot to offer and I am so excited for whatever she writes next. Um, I guess I just like old white lady literature. <laughs> it works for me, uh, especially when she's exploring things that are universal problems. Um, yeah, because like uh, there's even the moment here in this book that, uh, where with the Capitol riots and Lucy is, you know, she's horrified, but she and William both are, are sort of like, but they understand, they're like, I understand why. I understand why they're so angry. I understand why people are angry. It's just a thing that, you know, doesn't get said or explored very often. Um, so very, really fascinating. Anyway, um, and, uh, <laughs> how do I say this? I don't mean to say at all that Strout is, is saying that the, the rioters were right or that Lucy is saying that either. She's horrified. It, they, she thinks it's horrible. Um, it's more that she she understands that people... There are a lot of people who feel disenfranchised because she also talks about uh, George Floyd um, and she's horrified, horrified, horrified by that and also understands why people are, are rioting about that and about the fact that 
something so horrific could happen and that there's a, a whole <laughs> group of people who are still not being treated as basically people. <laughs> so yeah, just a really excellent and wonderful book. But I So now I'm reading The Beat Queen and I am ooh, about halfway through and I forgot so much about this book. I forgot so much about this book. Yeah, I will. I don't want to go on. I've already been talking for 30 minutes and I didn't even mean to talk that long. So I will talk about this in, later in another video, but I am I'm sort of blown away by reading this the second time. Um, I had forgotten how, I don't want to say ex necessarily experimental, but just it's, again, di doing interesting thing with the narratives, just doing really interesting things with the narratives. So, anyway, I will be back, uh, hopefully, uh, <laughs> there goes my screen again, uh, I'll be back hopefully on... later this weekend to do maybe like a wrap up of the year uh, to talk about some of my favorite reads of the year and then I will be putting together the Q&A videos. Um, I'll probably do two videos, one that's about books and one that's about expat life and then I will try to get those out over the next couple of weeks. And I want to say thank you to everybody who uh, put in questions if you're still here. Probably <laughs> not, but uh, thank you so much. If you if you put in a question, I will answer it. And I didn't I didn't say much in the comments on that call for questions because I uh, I was too tempted to start answering questions. And I was like, just keep your fingers away from the keyboard. So okay, all right. So I wish you a happy Friday. Um, I will look forward to seeing you uh, soon and. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Have a lovely evening and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.